Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And it's been a while since I've done an AB3 video. I've been pumping out some Age of Mythology stuff. Hopefully the majority of you guys are enjoying that. Please go check it out. I know that it's not retold. It's not all brand spanking new, but I want to start building that hype up. I want to get you guys involved. And hopefully in the near future, there will be a few basic guides coming out before retold even hits the market. So you guys can get involved on Age of Mythology. All right, let's have a look at this then. So we do have Kaleli here playing as Lakota in the top right part of the map on the Florida map here. And this one I've been told is very, very interesting because we are going to be seeing some water action with Lakota. Now, when do you ever see that, ladies and gents? When do you ever see on a 1v1 game a Lakota player going on to water? It's kind of unheard of. Like, you see it with Howd, of course. It's very strong. You open up with three fishing boats or maybe four. Um, sometimes you see it with Aztec. Maybe not so much with Aztec either. Lakota, on the other hand, is quite unheard of indeed. So let's see how this one goes. And now we do have uh, an Asian opponent here. Interestingly, going in for a monastery start here is China. What on earth is going on, ladies and gents? Uh, dropping a monastery down and a village and uh, this is the deck immediately going for the t export card very very standard however that ladies and gents is not standard the monastery instead of a trade post now the monastery is going to give you a trickle of 0.7 xp which is nice it's not going to be as effective as a trade post However, this can be used for outlaw and mercenary production. So let's see how this one goes, because there's barely anything in age two here for our Chinese opponent, and there's a lot loaded in age three and four. So that's gonna be very interesting. Let's have a look back at Kaleli here, one of my favorite Lakota players. I really do enjoy watching him. Uh, Lakota is my favorite Civ, as you guys probably know. I hope you know that Lakota is one of my favorite Civs. And I do like to showcase them quite a bit on the channel. And you know what? Sue me. I enjoy Lakota. I love playing them. I want to show you guys how much I love playing them and how cool they are as a sieve. And they're not hugely popular. And that's a, a great benefit as well because a lot of you guys can see that. Now, 100 coin is going to be coming in here for Kaleli, which is great. He's uh, opened up with a with a market. I think you start with a market, though. You do start with a market, sorry. So he's just dropped the TP here. I think he definitely went hunting dogs. Uh, yes, he's on. He's collecting that food. He's gone hunting dogs. He is going with the chief, which is the 400 wood age up. And he's starting to pull in his hunts. Majority of heels on wood. It's very standard, ladies and gents. Don't mess around with it. This is what I've done on one of my recent guide videos, your first five minutes as Lakota. This is pretty much what Kaleli's done here is exactly what I do in my first five minutes on my video so it's it's a very very good video if you want to check that out it's really really good okay so Kaleli here is going to be grabbing 75 xp here fantastic really really good and what do we see from our chinese opponent now we do see porcelain tower age two ladies and gents we're seeing this more and more we're not seeing the summer palace age two we're seeing weird stuff the meta's always kind of changing moving around which is really really nice to see we see a villagers building this porcelain tower ASAP Rocky right now. And we've got Boxer Rebellion coming in. So wanting to play defensive here. We've got 50% uh, um, town center damage and also the command post as well. So yeah, it's uh, the irregulars and sentries no longer lose HP when they are popped. So scary. Very, very scary indeed. But what's even more scary is we do see a double dock opening for Kaleli about to get into H2. Majority of Vils are still on wood here. And... He is doing the wood game, ladies and gents. And the only thing that says this is a water deck, of course, we have the fish market and we have a couple of the buccaneers here. They are fantastic, these buccaneer cards. Insane. These privateer ships are huge. Absolutely huge. And uh, 500 coin gets you three of them. 800 coin gets you four of them in age three. Very, very nice indeed. So Kaleli is immediately going to be shipping 700 wood. Of course he is. Oh my god, triple dock. Triple dock. Hang on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four docks. This is silly. Kaleli's having a bit of fun here. We're not playing Age of Mythology. We don't need four docks. What the hell is going on here? Am I missing a trick? When would you ever need to build four docks? And now we're going to see 600 wood 
coming off as well. So double wood shipment, of course, is coming in. This is insane. Um, okay, yeah. All I can say is, um, uh, can we all say it together? Um, that's pretty much it. What I am going to do very quickly is sometimes I like to do this. I'm just going to get a quick uh, snapshot of, uh, of, of four docks in action here. Um, because uh, never before seen ever. There we go. There it is. And we're going to go back and we're going to... There we go. Gonna return that back there. Wow. So, yeah... Four docks, ladies and gents. I don't really know what to say at this point, but I mean, is it is it worth going four docks? I mean, a dock is 200 wood each, and yes, you're going to get your fishing boats out exceptionally fast, but I don't know. I've got to, I've got to talk to Kaleli at some point about this. Four docks. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, that's all. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. Let's have a look at our Chinese opponent briefly while Kaleli is messing around with four docks. We do see the good old French consulate, of course, and we see that the porcelain tower is actually on coin. This is interesting. Shipping 700 coins still, however. And enabling... I mean, the age up is at six minutes. I, I, I don't know. Is that... Is that quicker? Is it quicker? I mean, we're going to see it right now coming in. We've got... Um, Eight villagers building now the Summer Palace. Now, the Summer Palace, when in age three, gives you 1,000 food. So you could see it as a potential FI. I'm seeing this. This could be an FI here. I mean, it, it's got to it's gotta be, right? There's so much in age four. The Summer Palace gives you 1,000 food. I mean, yeah. Look at how tight-knit this is, ladies and gents. This is an ultimate FI strategy here. It's pretty darn wild. And that 1,000 coin, he's going to be able to ship immediately a 1,000 coin here. And all he needs to do is just get some food gathered. I don't know if he's actually going to be sending anything else from the consulate here, but wow. Okay, so Kaleli definitely going for the eco. That's uh, no doubt about it. He is going to be dropping a tribal marketplace here. Going to now be getting in long lines from his dock. And there it is, the fish market coming in. Absolutely huge economy here he's got 20 fishing boats in seven minutes 15 he's he's got 20 fishing boats ladies and gents and he's now going to be able to just gather the food and coin required absolutely insane i've never seen anything like it look at that lakota overscoring this early on is pretty darn impressive now let's have a quick look back here at Yes, the thousand coin is coming in. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, doesn't actually need the porcelain tower on coin anymore. Could switch it to wood and start getting some wood. Because he's going to need a little bit of infrastructure potentially. I mean, I don't know. I may be just spouting absolute rubbish here. He's going to need some kind of military building potentially at some point. He's got no TP. So he's going to struggle a little bit to get that car tempo in as well. Which, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to see. I imagine he's going to go for the Confucian. It's going to have to go Confucian here, surely, when he does age up. Clearly here must be on the age up. Yes, halfway through the age up now. What do we see? We're finally seeing a war hut going down. And uh, quite a straightforward build here, to be honest. It's three vil, double, double wood shipment. Boom, boom, boom. Get those fishing boats out and then slapping in the fish market after to really improve your economy. And now in transition from two to three, we're simply seeing the war hut and corral going. He's probably just buying the wood, ladies and gents. Look how quick the gold's coming in. He's not got anyone on wood. He's just going to be buying. Look at how quick it's coming in. It's uh, 26 fishing boats. This is just insane. Um, yeah, I... I, I I don't honestly know. I am very speechless because four docks. I don't think I've ever seen that. This has got to be a bit of a meme, surely. Four docks are not required. But it's... Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. We. So, yeah, it looks like he's going for the FI as well. We've got um, fast industrial of the ages here. But look how better off Kaleli is. Can we talk about how better off he is compared to um, the Chinese FI here? We do see the White Pagoda here. Going to be shipping 10 Disciples. And it increases the stats of the Shaolin Master and Disciples and the latter's uh, train limit. So now I think 
I don't know how many you can train here, but they are extra tough. Not really feeling um, the the age four here from our Chinese opponent, but he is now going for the Great Migration. Um, we're going to be getting... He's going to just be absolutely chucking down those villages there. And I think he got the wood from the French consulate. The 500 wood potentially, yeah. And now it's very unusual build. Never seen a build like this before. Both both sides here. Never seen four dock opening. Never seen, you know, porcelain tower age two into the pagoda for four. And uh, not opening up with a TP. Now getting that TP down, however. And we are seeing 36 villagers here. Kaleli on 51 with an insane economy. Starting to do the classic Wakina bow rider composition now coming in. And now we do see the age four is on the way. And I believe uh, the wise woman. I don't know whether that gives you the bison. I can't say for sure, ladies and gents. I, I'm not very... I'm quite rusty with some of my natives, you know. We are seeing the community plaza going down. Something you definitely need to get. Uh, especially later in the game, age three, age four with Lakota. You want to get that community plaza. You really want to... Uh, just have it nearby your villagers so you can switch to attack dance if you need to. Uh, you also have access to the siege dance in age four as well. So that's important. Okay, yeah, it is the bison. Holy hell, that's a lot of bison. Okay, so Kaleli's going to be fine for a while here. He's got so much food. His eco is just off the chain. 59 gatherers in total. 38 villagers for our Chinese opponent here. And another card available. And what is it going to be, ladies and gents? It is going to be the uh, Akichita. The Akichita here increases HP of all warriors. Look at that. Oh, no, he's switching it. He's going for an H3 card. He's going for the Cav Combat. Okay. All right. He's switching it up. He's switching it up. Is he going to try and get the um, Age 4 upgrade here for the Bow Riders? That is the question. He could also get the upgrade for the Wakina Rifleman as well. But uh, yeah, he's got the unlimited bison. So if he needs to stay in base, he's got that. Uh, I, I would maybe think about getting some TPs potentially. It's, it's a little bit later into the game, but um, that will really help with XP tempo. Um, he does have, of course, a little bit of XP coming in because of his vills. He's got a lot of bow riders now. What is our Chinese opponent doing? It's a very strange mishmash of units here. No upgrades on these Kashyyyks or Kiang Pikemen. We do have those buff disciples, of course. And we're just seeing mass Ming army here. Pikemen Kashyyyk. Very unusual. I sort of get it against Lakota. I do. Crazy thing is, is the, uh, the Chinese opponent here hasn't actually scouted at all what kind of composition they're going to be up against. Completely going in blind here. Quite scary. We're going to see the upgrades coming in for the Kashyyyks, the steps. Yeah, a lot of pikemen, as I mentioned. Now, I think the Wakinas are going to be pretty darn good here. I think the Wakina Bowrider is definitely going to be that. Look at the score lead here from Kaleli. You never really want to be um, below in score when you're playing versus Lakota. When you're playing as Lakota, overscoring is great because they're a little bit like Russia. They don't overscore that that much because of the uh, they don't build houses so the actual value of the uh, of the sieve isn't as high yeah so 26 fishing boats is how it's staying I still can't get over these docks um, yeah still can't get over it that's what I'm gonna say and now we, we are gonna be switching over to that XP so we're gonna now get that really good trickle in here 5.82 a second to try and get that next card in and it I, I think a lot of, I mean, it could be so many here. He's got the Akichita. Uh, look at these, look at these units now. The Akichita, by the way, gives you 20% HP. And, no, it's just HP, sorry. Just HP. But it's a, for all units. So look at these bow riders, how, how beefy they are. Oh my god, this is a lot of units. At 14 minutes, by the way. I mean, well done for Kaleli. Look at this. 14 minutes and we've... And we've nearly maxed out our units. Um, you know, China's pretty good at, at massing as well. We must bear that in mind. But it's nowhere near the level, um, to be honest. We've got 82 units here total against 74. Uh, we are going to be seeing the bow riders trying to pick off a few vills. Easily going to get these vill pickoffs here. Chinese opponent's going to have to try and react here. Going to have to try and do something. The Wakinas here. 
Don't want to get on top of the honored step riders. Hopefully the bow rider is going to be able to make a good connection. Oh, didn't do the volley there. As long as the bow riders can be in front here, um, it should be okay. And that's exactly what's happening. No sort of drag boxing here from Kelly. So the Wakinas are going to be in a sort of an interesting position here. But those bow riders are absolutely going to make mincemeat of those step riders. Look at them all going down. And the Wakinas are going to hopefully just focus on those pikemen there. And the bow riders are not being targeted at all by those pikemen. The pikemen need to be on the bow riders. And uh, it's not happening here. And, and this is looking um, pretty decent from Kaleli. Absolutely fantastic. Has another card available. Isn't going to go for it just yet. We are going to see further cav damage coming in. 15% damage now for Kaleli. And we do have, look at that. Yeah, the 8.6 boost to damage because of the community plaza here. So yeah, could he could probably just go 18 with Keeners, quite honestly, but really wants to get that cav damage in. Not a bad engagement there by the Chinese opponent. I thought he wasn't going to do particularly well, but not bad. Not bad. And uh, Porcelain is on wood here. And actually isn't making anything from the monastery here. So the monastery, I think, was just simply for that XP trickle because they didn't go for the TP opening here. So kind of a weird one. Honestly, I think you could still do it with the TP opening. You just build the Porcelain Tower. You, you have way more... XP tempo, I think you have you have more cards available to you. I'm not too sure the monastery thing. Maybe maybe I'm being stupid. I don't know. But yeah, Kaleli now is going to be summoning back the War Chief double bow rider production in right now. Another card available, probably 18 Wakina. Could be devastating with the Takala. Could actually also go for a big uh, Tushunki. To Shunky Madness, the big button. Yeah, the Great Hunter's coming in. That's what it's going to be for, ladies and gents. I think it costs 1,800 food. 1,800 food, I think. And you get you get um, every two minutes of the game or something, you get a cav unit or something. It's something crazy like that. And the Great Hunter's going to be able to provide uh, 15, uh, sorry, 1,150 food here. So we'll be able to get that big button. Probably doesn't want to overcommit just yet. I honestly would just wait. Look at all of these two canoes absolutely delicious when we get this when we get the ma the uh, mass lancer calf coming in i'm hoping that's what's going to happen here let's see what kaleli does food is about to come in there it is 2000 food are we going to see the big button we've got to see the big button here surely look at the amount of two canoes that can be cleared up here it's got to be done surely fishing boats have still got a lot going on here still a lot and we're not seeing it. We, we must be seeing it. Why is there so much food being gathered here? It's got to be for it, right? I'm not seeing anything in production really at all here. We are going to be seeing... Vil's going over 15% extra damage here. Going to be absolutely be beautiful. I don't think he needs it. I think he's pretty confident. Another card available for Kaleli here. And just doing an absolutely fantastic job. Look at these champion bow riders, ladies and gents. Not to be messed with. Insane amount of damage. 43 base damage here. Huge. And the Onika Sheiks have no chance. And, and we are going to now see four Takalas coming in. Surely not macroing for Imperial Age here. Can't be. But doing a great job. And it's just going to clear up the two canoes. Don't even need the, the, uh, the Tushinki. 18 Makinas coming in. More champion bow riders. The bow rider is just absolutely holding it. Huge. <coughs> Sorry, ladies and gents. I'm uh, still slightly recovering from a cold. Oh, yeah, look. These Kiang Pipe are going to get cleared up. Good night. Making Lakota look OP in this game. Uh, it's got to be the four dark opening, isn't it? If you get water, four dark opening. Why not? Why not? And uh, I think Kaleli at this moment is kind of just playing with his opponent here. I think Kaleli is pretty darn confident here. Not too sure what card he wants to go for. Keeps thinking about it. Honestly, I'll just go 18 Makinas or the uh, Takalas here, to be honest. Takalas Shadow Tech, ladies and gents. So Shadow Teching means that when you age up, they will automatically upgrade for free. Shadow Teching. 
That is what it is called. Oh, my God. Quickly get that village or get that castle up so you can garrison. But it's looking like a guga. It's looking like a big guga right now. That is a lot of ills being taken down. And Kaleli simply can just ride away back home. Absolutely delicious. Taken a lot of vills there. 77 vills and fishing boats for Kaleli. Only 46 vills for our Chinese opponent. So Eco is not looking good. Losing, basically not contesting water at all. Do we have any kind of... No, see, we don't have anything in here. No anti-water. Always have your anti-water in, ladies and gents. You never know when you're going to need it. And he's going to be fine here. He's going to be drag boxing a little bit here. Not too bad. <clears throat> You know, the Wakina's all bunched up here, but it's okay. The, P the Pikeman can't do anything here at all. We do now see champion Takala soldiers. Look at these. 1,000 HP. 50 base damage. Absolutely beautiful. Doesn't even matter what they're attacking. They may as well. There is the GG. Accidentally clicked the, uh, the stats there. There is the GG, ladies and gents. Fantastic game. Wow, we We saw... Four docks, ladies and gents. There it is. Once again, I just got to show you one more time. Wow. So we saw three vil, double wood shipment from Kaleli there to get those four docks out. Then coming in with the fish market. Uh, yeah, it was the fish market, wasn't it? Yeah, fish market upgrade and then boom. Just pretty much after that. Macroing for the age three, then going in pretty much straight into age four after that as well. Really read the opponent well, understood that, well, really didn't scout that much, but just, I guess, you know, I mean, if there was aggression, it would have been, it would have been played differently if he got aggression then, but yeah, really, really crazy, greedy play here. No anti-water from the opponent meant that he could secure the entire water there. Absolutely insane. Look at that economy. 48 versus 34,000. You can see it. And all resources gathered. Look at that. Right, ladies and gents. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Big shout out to Kaleli representing, representing Lakota. One of my favorite sieves and my main sieve at the moment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something from it as well. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this. And of course, I'll catch you in the next video or the next stream. Catch you later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.